But what of the things that we've shared? What of all the, the sweet words that you spoke in private? Oh, uh, well... Well, that's just what we call pillow talk, baby. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And, you know, here on the channel, I think most people know I am not the biggest fan of Tom King's Batman run. While I do admit he is a pretty, he is a good writer when, when he's focused and he has a character that he, he can he can identify with and he enjoys, he's actually pretty good. But, you know, one of, a lot of the issues with Batman or is it's really decompressed it's it's far more bloated than it needed to be he, you could see he was stretching stories out he was throwing sonnets and music lyrics and all kinds of other dumb tropes into, into the story and uh, it, it was far too much trauma and it, it, i think everyone can basically admit that it kind of runs off the rails and about batman number 50 also known as the wedding the fake wedding uh, the dc comics fake out and uh, here to talk with me today about Maybe how Tom King could have maybe saved his Batman run or maybe some of the things that they could have done maybe from that point on that would have uh, given us a new insight into Batman and maybe did something that was different and meaningful, you know, maybe stood this test of time is my good friend, Josh. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Uh, getting through the last uh, week or two of school here, so I'll be able to talk a little bit more now. My schedule will be freed up. So Tom King's Batman run, it starts out pretty okay, like... Oh, I don't want to undersell it. It starts out pretty good. It, it's a new take on, on Batman, you know, in the very first issue. He's about to die, and he's he, he's basically telling Alfred, you know, did I have a good life? You know, and, and Alfred, did, you know, later on admits in the in the series that, you know, he, he lied to him and said, yes, Master Bruce, he did. And, and that's when he introduces a uh, Gotham girl and uh, whatever her brother's name is. And, and the f first few story arcs are, are pretty, pretty good. And then I, I think when, when Tom King showed his true colors was really the War of Jokes and Riddles when you find out that Batman is basically a buffoon, was tricked by the Riddler into making an ass of himself and siding with criminals so that he could make the Joker smile or something stupid like that. It wasn't a terrible run, but right at issue 50 when they did the wedding fake out, that's really where the, where the issue, uh, where Batman falls off the tracks. He had a few options that he could have done. He could have he obviously let Bruce and Selina marry. He could have, uh, you know, had Selena leave him at the altar and maybe Bruce discovers something new about himself. Or, or maybe Bruce leaves her at the altar realizing he can't give up Batman. He can't give up his bit or vow. He can't leave his vow behind, you know, for marriage or something like that. What do you think would have been a more impactful or, or some of the ways that he could have gone that would have actually fleshed out Bruce as a character, or added something new that that would have been meaningful to readers? Like you said, there were pretty much three main paths they could have taken with that story, and each one of them would have led to some form of different character growth uh, for Batman. But I think the one that would have been the most viable would have been to have uh, to kind of go with the way they did, where Selena leaves Bruce at the altar because she has this assumption about him that. You know, the world needs Batman and that if he's with her, he's going to be happy and there won't be another there, then there won't be Batman or Batman won't be the same. So she can't be with him for that reason. Um, I think this actually would have opened up the doors to the most opportunity for Bruce to have some kind of character growth that could have been uh, much more centered around his own decisions and and his own agency rather than him moving forward through the direct actions of other characters. Um, Cause Bruce usually moves forward through the actions of one of his sons, whether it be, you know, Nightwing, um, Jason Todd or uh, Tim Drake or Damien. Um, it's usually something that one of them does that propels Bruce to move as a character. And Selena would have been the catalyst here, but the majority of it could have come down to Bruce. Um, I'm not a comic book writer, uh, I don't claim to be, but I think the most interesting pathway that they could have chosen was to have Selena leave Bruce at the altar, and then you have Bruce, this devastates him, but he can't understand why it devastates him, and you send him on this journey of trying to figure out, okay, you know, why did this hurt me so bad when Selena left me here, 
you know, I'm used to operating alone. I'm, I'm Batman. I don't need partners. I don't need friends. Um, there's only the mission. But once he got a taste of the possibility of love and the possibility of having a long term partnership and relationship with Selena, he couldn't let it go. I just actually finished Batman Hush and you kind of see him that he's made peace with the fact that I can't have a relationship with Selena because she might have been compromised by Scarecrow and Hush during this time. And I can't take that risk of letting her, you know, come in and ruin my operation or she could betray us. Like, And he's OK with that decision. I think Tom King could have taken that in a different direction where you have Bruce not be OK with Selena's decision to leave. And then you send him on this journey of I have to get her back and I have to change to convince her that, yes, you will change me as a person. You will lead to a happier Batman, but this happier Batman can still be effective. I think that's the pathway that would have led to the most interesting story developments and uh, the most character growth for Bruce Wayne. Realizing that he doesn't have to do this alone, that he, he can share that part of himself uh, you know, with other people and maybe even be a better crime fighter with someone that he loves that's close to him that's, you know, somewhat in harm's way because people will eventually, obviously villains will eventually know that they're together and, and she's, uh, you know, kind of a weak point. That's a lot of the times that the way that you get to superheroes is is through their loved ones. Uh, that certainly would have fleshed out the character, made him uh, much stronger and probably would have had uh, a different outlook on life and maybe uh, the way he treated criminals. Maybe he wouldn't be beating people to a pulp all the time. Maybe, you know, he would have been a little bit more a kinder, gentler Batman. The major point of Batman that I found interesting through my recent run in with trauma studies um, is his issue, his anger issues. Um, he tends to, and if you, if you look at Batman compared to like any other member in his family, maybe minus Damien and Jason Todd, um, if you look at Tim Drake and, and Dick Grayson, they don't tend to solve their problems with anger. They're very level-headed. They uh, tend to kind of try to think things through to the last action. And even when, you know, like they do apprehend criminals and they take bad guys down, they never viciously beat them. They don't, they don't let that anger dominate them and own them. Batman responds to so many problems with nothing but just pure anger. Um, there's a lot of times where, you know, he'll punch a computer screen in or, you know, like uh, just savagely beat a villain um, for, you know, saying something like if the Joker mocks Jason Todd or something, you know, I killed Robin, Batman will just beat him to within an inch of his life. Um, this would have led to definitely a reduction in Batman's anger. Um, and I think you'd see him take a more uh, calm and sophisticated approach to crime fighting, kind of like Nightwing or, or Tim Drake does because that anger would be loosened. Um, all of his pain and all of his suffering would be loosened. He would have a different purpose in life other than just to live for the vow that he made, you know, on his parents' grave. Well, it also would have created new dynamics with his villain. That's one of the things about Batman. While I love the character and I love reading Batman, one of the stale things is, is the rogues don't really change a lot. There's, you know, slight changes in interpretation, but the classic rogues gallery you don't get a lot of change as far as who's in there. But what would have been interesting is, is them noticing a change in Batman and having to change their techniques and their tactics on how to get to him or maybe affect him once they realize he's got maybe a different outlook on life now. And you, you do see that concern come through in stories like Hush where he considers Selena to be a liability. Like you said, it provides a, a, a much more interesting dynamic to both sides of the story. It provides, you know, an opportunity to take some of Batman's rogues into a new direction, which, you know, we've seen this with Joker before, you know, in uh, particularly in Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's run on Batman um, with Death of the Family, where Joker basically tried to kill off the Batman family because he was jealous of the attention that Batman showed to them instead of him. And he just wanted it to go back to a war between him and just Batman. He was tired of the family. So, you know, that could just show how Joker would be affected by this. You know, that Batman has this other object of love in his life. And, you know, he's paying attention to Selina. That would pretty much eat Joker alive. There's a lot of interesting dynamics on both sides of the coin that they could have entered there. You know, you could have took a different approach to Batman's rogues gallery. 
you know, they could have tried to get at him through Catwoman. And then, you know, you could have had the, a new dynamic with, you know, Batman and his relationship with Selina and maybe him being a little overprotective and controlling of her. Um, the point is they, they just had so many directions and fresh takes that they could have done on just about every character in the Batman franchise if they would have gone in this direction. Of course, he did somewhat go in that direction. She did leave him at the at the uh, aisle, but it all ended up being part of Bane's plan. But it ended up being really Thomas Wayne, you know, from the Flashpoint universes. Pl- I don't understand how it ended up being City of Bane, but Thomas Wayne was the bad guy. But we're we're not talking about that. What the other uh, more, more interesting way that they could have gone, or the other interesting way they could have gone was to just let Batman be married. And that would have been a big change in the character. I believe he's never been married. Like in the entire 80 year history of the character, as far as continuity, Batman's never been married. That would have been a huge change. And it would have been obviously a fresh outlook. They could have explored some of the things that we just talked about, but Batman ultimately ending up in a, in a healthy, you know, somewhat healthy functioning, you know, marital relationship after uh, issue 50 moving forward. It could have been similar to that, but obviously different. When all this stuff was going on and before, you know, that whole spoiler thing happened where they accidentally or purposely, whatever, revealed the result of the wedding before the book came out, I was kind of thinking it was going to go in two paths. Either one, you were going to have Selena leave him at the altar and it was going to, you know, lead to further um, deconstruction by Tom King, which is what happened. Um, Or you could actually have them get married and then we could go from there. Now, My solution to having them actually get married would involve Bruce hanging up the cowl. Um, I would have taken that in a totally different direction. I would have had him, maybe he could run as Batman for a little while. Then he kind of decides, no, you know, I can't do this. I'm free of, you know, my anger. I'm free of my quest for vengeance. Um, you know, I am free of this, you know, hatred and, and I, I've put this trauma that I had behind me. Thus, I no longer need Batman. I would have had him turn it back over to Dick Grayson once again. The next person in line for that would have been him. um, And you could have kind of done what was always meant to happen, where Bruce actually passes the torch to Dick instead of an emergency torch passing with Bruce's, you know, claimed death from Final Crisis. Um, I think that would have been a very good way to take that and you could have continued with the narrative about you know batman and and thomas wayne i think that would have been a fascinating story to have you know thomas wayne kind of come after dick grayson is like you know you're the you're the false son you know you 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 weren't really adopted you 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 were adopted you're not his biological son you don't deserve the you know the batman mantle i think that would have been much more interesting than what we actually got um, I'm trying you know, to had like, kind of work on Damien. Like, why is why is he in your? That's that you're the Batman. Why why is he in your position? He's not. That's not even his father, kind of thing. Yes, because Damien and Grayson have one of the best relationships in the DC universe, as far as I'm concerned. And Grayson is one of the probably five people that Damien actually respects in the DC universe. They have that kind of paternal slash brotherly bond from you know when bruce was presumed dead and they were batman and robin together you could have had thomas wayne you know beating grayson down saying you know you you're the false son the false inheritor of the cow then you could have had him going to damien and saying why are you letting this interloper take what's you know take your bloodline what's biologically yours i think that would have been that would have been awesome you know to to see those three characters you know go at it and you know, you could have this could that could have easily led to Bruce coming back and, and taking the cow back over, uh, which is kind of the direction you probably want to go in, because I don't think unfortunately, I don't think Grayson is maintainable as Batman for for an extended period of time because readers just want Bruce Wayne. Um, but that could have led to a whole new rebirth of the Batman character, like you said. Um, you know, he's married now, and I, I think you would have... You're not going to see him jumping and smiling and stuff like Nightwing does, but just seeing him take a lighter, you know, uh, less brutal, less grimoire approach to crime, you know, because he's married now and he's let go on that trauma a little bit and he's let go of his anger, I think it would have just led to a whole new era for Batman that could have been kicked off by a really cool 
you know, event with Grayson and Damien. And I think they, I think Tom King just missed a lot of opportunities with the story that he told. Of course, the, the last option that we talked about would be Bruce leaving her at the altar, which actually, if you, if you think about the character, that one was always kind of the most uh, likely scenario. <laughs> he finally, he realizes you're maybe possibly Thomas Wayne would have played a part in this. He's like, listen, uh, I'm not marriage material. There's no way I can be a be a good husband, you know, uh, it, being the Batman, and I'm not giving the Batman up. What would have been interesting would have been to, to see the um, emotional fallout, accepting that, and maybe he becomes more of the brutal Batman that was almost killing himself, kind of what happened after uh, the death of Jason Todd, where he kind of blames himself, you know, for hurting Selena, so he starts taking it out on criminals, takes way too many chances, you know, when his sons come in there, obviously, you know, you would expect Dick Grayson would be one of them. Or, or maybe Jason Todd has to be the one that comes out and finally battles him and brings him back from the brink. And is like, listen, you've lost your mind. i got to bring you back. There have been a, a lot of cool things they could have done with that. Although I don't think we would have got character progression as much as maybe some regression and then propelled kind of more back to the steady as it was before. Well, the main problem with Tom King's run as a whole is that you can deconstruct a character down to the basics. Frank Miller did that with Daredevil and Batman, and now we both consider Frank Miller's run on those characters to be, you know, comic book classics for the ages. Because Miller remembered that even with all of the deconstruction, you, you can't do deconstruction unless you do reconstruction after it. Um, you have to bring that character back up to at least the point they were before you started or leave them off at a point that was even higher, uh, which Frank Miller did that with Batman and he did it with Daredevil. You know, I think you're right. I think that could have led to, you know, and leaving her at the altar because he just makes this decision that, you know, I have to choose between either Batman, my life's work or Selena. If he chooses Batman, which is probably what Bruce would choose, you know, if if he's in character with the Bruce that, you know, we've known for or has been written in the comics for, you know, the past 20, 30 years, um, he he would have definitely chosen the, the job over Selena, the mission, um, as he puts it. And, you know, I love your idea about, you know, Jason Todd being the one to say, like, hey, you know, uh, you're acting like you did after I was killed. Please don't turn this into another version of my death. Like, you know, you can't let yourself go down that path. And maybe, you know, those two have to have some kind of climactic showdown um, with Grayson trying to play maybe the middleman in that and stop him from fighting. But, uh, you know, yeah, you, you could have done a lot of fascinating stuff with that story. And then you could just kind of leave Batman, you know, maybe at the, you know, level he was at when it all started. And, you know, you pull him down in this rut and then you, you bring him back up to maybe the level he started. Or, you know, maybe you finally have, you know, like that family heart to heart with him and uh, all his sons and, and, you know, Batgirl. And they kind of tell him, like, you know, instead of leaving Selena at the altar, maybe, you know, this is something that you should consider. Maybe take a look around at all of us who, you know, you call Nightwing your greatest success and, you know, you're, you're, you're always so prideful when you look at him. Maybe look at his life and try to incorporate that in some, in, you know, some of those qualities into your own life. Maybe don't leave the next woman at the altar uh, when that chance comes around again for you. So they, they could have done, they could have done so much with building the character of, of Batman and, and, and of Bruce Wayne. And they, they really could have reestablished his relationship with the Batman family too. That was one, um, you know, part of it that I, I didn't agree with, with his run at all was the relationship that the Bat family had with him where it was, it seemed, it all seemed rather inhuman to me, like the level of emotion and, or should I say the level of non-emoting from the members of the family and from Bruce in response to them. I feel like it was just missed opportunities all around. There were a lot of balls dropped during that run. And is is especially after issue 50, that's really where it went off the tracks. And like we said, there's, there were three opportunities to, to go in three different directions. They chose one of them. It just, it wasn't the character. It wasn't Batman. It was the, probably the least interesting story arc, like the way they could have taken it. And then you had, there's so many, just so much filler in there with the nightmare story arc. And then city of Bane makes no sense. It should have been city of flashpoint Batman, I guess. Yeah. It, it's too bad. You know what might've been, it probably should have been 
a well thought of Batman run, you know, that kind of stood the test of time. Is, but I think it's just going to be lost to the ether. I don't think anyone's going to remember it. And if they do, it'll be for all the crap at the end. I'd seen an interesting tweet. This was a while ago where someone was defending his run on Batman. And they said that it was one that would be worthy of academic study for, you know, for years to come. And my response to that is, yeah, it is. And this is coming from someone who studies comic books and comic characters at a graduate level. It is worthy of academic study because it tells us exactly what not to do. Um, we can look at that run and say, this is exactly how you do not deconstruct a character. And uh, this is exactly how you break a character. Um, these are examples of what not to do. So it is worthy of academic study, just not in good ways, in basically in, in bad ways. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the warning signs for us to say, okay, this is how you do not handle, you know, your flagship character. I'm glad it's over, but you know, there, there's a lot of missed, missed opportunities, but I'm glad James, uh, you know, Tinian's getting his opportunity with the character and they're doing something else. And Josh, is there anything else that you need to say before we wrap this up? I, I think this just goes to show us that, you know, comic book writers have to remember that if you're going to do deconstruction, you have to remember to reconstruct the character at the end. I believe it was Ben that said that, uh, you know, if you're going to go and play some play in someone else's yard, you have to put everything back in, back in working order before you leave. Yeah, well, Ben just burnt the yard down, so, uh, you know. He should I didn't say he practiced it. what he preached, but he made a good point. <laughs> if you're going to go and break someone else's toys, you got to fix them before you, before you go home. <laughs>